Hey, well thanks for joining me in my shop. Uh, I'm going to be going over the schematic for this radio. This is a General Electric KM500 uh, radio. And uh, I'm going to be going over the schematic for the first time myself. So let's, uh, let's flip to the schematic and we'll see how this goes here. So let me just figure out what I'm doing. Oh, don't look at that. Look at that. Okay. And rather than use a camera, I'm doing this uh, using a uh, screenshot, basically, of the uh, of the schematic. So that's a great pile of information here. Layout. Uh, here's the uh, chart for alignment, and lots of little notes here and there. So let's start here with the power supply. Okay, so you can see the power cord is just connected straight to the primary of this transformer, and that's it. There's nothing else going on here, no connections to the chassis, nothing at all. Just straight into the primary and done, which is good, which means there's, there's no chance of this radio having any kind of hot chassis uh, issues related to the power line coming in. So we look at the output of the power transformer, we see 5 volts. For the rectifier tube heater, we see 6.3 volts for all the other heaters, it says right there, all heaters and the lamps too. And then we have the high voltage winding here, putting out, putting out 280 volts. It looks like somebody has penned that in after making a measurement. So the positive voltage is developed on this line right here something like 280 volts and we have the filter capacitor and then uh, the field coil which is uh, right in the speaker itself and then another capacitor and see these are relatively small too both of them are tens and we come to our first note oh look at that it even puts the symbol of the capacitor one of those tubular multi-section filter capacitors like the metal can and they have these little symbols on it, the square and the triangle. But let's see, shouldn't matter much though, they're both 10. Let's see, no range switch shown in maximum counterclockwise position band A when viewed from the front, so the graph connections are vertical to this terminal and that little symbol there and the ground or low to chassis. See how they put these in quotes? Because they themselves know these terms are a little bit, just a little bit meaningless. Okay, 1941, 1942. You can see that the, uh, oh, KL500. This is a KM500. They're all the same. They're all pretty much identical. KM probably refers to, may, may refer to the kind of cabinet that this particular radio was meant to go in. Okay, so that was the power supply. I don't have any wires colored here, of course, because I'm just looking at this right on my computer here. Let's follow the antenna in. So here's the antenna coming. That cap antenna means capacitive antenna that's built into the uh, into the radio itself, which is uh, still in the cabinet. So if we look at the antenna, signal comes down here through this coil down here it makes a connection here. Now what is going on with this? And this goes up and it can be grounded or well, there's a loop antenna grounded here. I did say I'm winging this, didn't I? I did say I'm just doing this on the top of my head here. Around, around, out. Okay, so the signal comes up this line here. Oh, goes into the switch. Let's see the tapped coil here going into the switch. This has to be the band switch. 
little too complicated for me to explain exactly which wire is doing what here. But as you switch through the different bands, you switch different ways in which to connect the antenna. This loop antenna is for AM radio only. And so almost certainly when you switch off AM and go on to shortwave, it's switching in some combination of these coils. And it's dependent upon this external external antenna. And I'm pretty sure you'd want this closed. So you basically have the antenna connected across this coil to ground at all times. Just selecting different portions of the secondary here to switch from band to band. Now the output from here through this capacitor straight to the grid of this tube. So this radio does not have a front end RF tube, uh, which, which um, I guess I could say weakens the quality of the radio a little bit. Uh, this big resistor here, 2.2 mega ohm is to bleed off any charge that's building on the grid here and make sure the grid is staying where it's supposed to stay. It's almost certainly ABC controlled. We'll find out down the road here. So that's how the signal gets from the antenna into the first tube, the mixer tube. Uh, if we come down here, a little lower on the schematic, we see all these other coils here. Uh, these are all the oscillator coils controlling the local oscillator inside the radio. And as you switch that switch up there, you're switching in and out these different coils. And there they are labeled nicely so you can tell which is which. Each one of them is a tunable, adjustable coil. And uh, adjustable capacitor here. Where's the tuning capacitor, the one that you actually tune with? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's going to be this, C1, 2 to 20 with a trimmer, and there should be another one here, C22, no, it won't be that, it should be called C2. well here too long looking for stuff that I don't know where it is offhand. It's got to be associated with these coils down here. Now look at this capacitor here. It's got these little bump symbols on it. And they're open. There's another one down here with little bump symbols on it. I don't know what that means, because you can see the other capacitors like this one. It doesn't have any bumps on it. It must mean something. Somewhere on the schematic that'll be explained. Well, I can't spot the capacitor that gets adjusted to vary the oscillator. Four. Huh. Okay, well, somewhere in here, <laughs> maybe we'll find it later. Somewhere in here has got to be a variable capacitor uh, intended to tune the oscillator. Okay, and be aware, I could easily have some of this story wrong, easily. In fact, almost guaranteed, isn't it? So we have the uh, oscillator grid here and the signal grid here. And those two signals get mixed. And uh, if things are tuned right, there'll be something being presented to this transformer at its IF frequency, which is probably 455, but I haven't, I haven't noticed a note yet. Let's just peek down here quick. There it is, right over here, 455 kilocycles. That's the most common IF frequency. So the signal comes out of this first mixer tube. Anything at 455 is going to go through these transformers. These are tuned or trimmed with capacitors here. And from there, the signal comes out. 455 goes to the grid of this tube. Comes out the plate. Heads through these set of coils, also tuned to 455. Goes into here. 
And I think that says diode plate number one. I think that's what that says right there. So this is the detector tube. So the detection goes on with these little uh, plates here. At least they are shown in the diagram as little plates. A little hard to see in here. There's another diode plate number two. Looks like it's just grounded away. It's not used in particular. Output, the audio output, is then developed down in here. Here's the volume control right here. And the audio is picked off with this variable control. That's the volume control. Didn't I already say that? Fed up, up, up into this grid, into the second part of this tube, which is the triode here. So it gets boosted through the triode, the audio portion now. The audio is sent along through here through this capacitor which is blocking high voltage to the grid of the output tube. There it is there. It's a powerful tube so it has some extra grids in it so it'll help it push a lot of current through it. There's a screen grid here. So the amplified signal comes out the plate and it goes into the output transformer here and then out of the transformer into the uh, into the uh, voice coil here of the speaker and then we're listening to it. Now if we follow the DC, high voltage here, uh, 300 volts or so, we see one going up this way. Where does that go? Of course right through the transformer to the plate of the output tube. And the other one Follow this line up here. It goes to the screen grid. And then along here, almost certainly all these lines, well, I'll just move it up. I'll get it all on screen here if I can. See B plus coming up here, going through here to the plate. Plus come along here, going up here. DC goes through this coil, no problem, and up and over to the plate. If you don't believe me, there it is. 185 volts handwritten on there. Continue along. Up through here into the plate of this tube. Down through this resistor, up here through to the screen grid. So you want the screen grid to be a little less positive than the plates or it becomes too attractive kind of robs current from the plate there you are there screen grid again we're certainly going to want to take a look at this resistor uh, which will be carrying screen grid current and can get beat up quite a bit make sure that's working properly now let's take a look at the ABC voltage the ABC is developed in the detector. The DC is going to show up here. It's a negative voltage, oddly enough, in a way. It's going to come down here. It's going to be in this volume control. If you remember, I was measuring the three tabs on the volume control and I was finding a negative voltage. Oh, shouldn't be able to find a negative voltage here. Well, I found a negative voltage here and here anyway. That was the ABC. I think it was quite low, but then the radio's not receiving, so there's no signal coming through to the detector. It won't develop much of a negative voltage here. Through this big resistor, big resistor, um, there's virtually no current flowing in this circuit, so big resistor doesn't drop much voltage, if really any. So something like this. We see this coming up, coming up. Whoop, wrong line. Come along here. Here we go. Up here, up here, through the coil and to the grid. The ABC voltage is applied to the grid. And follow this along, along, along. Up, 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 up. Another great big honking resistor there. 2.2 mega ohms up here, over and to the grid. Of course, this is a. No, I won't say that. I was going to say it's a blocking capacitor, but it's not. And 
that's about it to tour this radio. Um, there should be a, is there a, there's a tone switch in this radio. Where's that? Here it is. Tone switch. Tone switch is done on the output of the detector first audio tube. Sometimes the tone switch will be in the plate circuit of the output tube. This is, this is a little bit better having it here. Teeny a little bit better, but that means uh, there's quite a high voltage right on this side of this switch. I'll take that back. High voltage on this side of the capacitor, but it shouldn't make it to the switch here. So now let's look at uh, the output. How is it biased? the cathode. Here's the cathode. And there's a big resistor here, 470 ohm. Big and it's probably a higher wattage resistor. It doesn't show it here, but it probably is. R10. I don't think the parts list is on this. No. Okay, so whoop, R, R10. And it's bypassed by a big capacitor, 20 uh, microfarad capacitor. So we want to check both these. Very important. Um, if this isn't correct, either the tube's going to run quiet or it's going to run hot, or both even. And there is a quiet output on this radio. I think the quieting's happening back here somewhere though. I, think, I don't think it's in the audio circuit. So that's how that's biased. Cathode resistor bypass. Detector here, um, not hit with high voltage, 70 volts. Then we measured something like that on one of the tubes, didn't we? Maybe that was the detector tube I was measuring 70 volts on. And that's just on the audio portion here, the triode portion. Now, these guys here are uh, biased by the negative voltage developed in the detector. So the cathodes are probably grounded straight. Let's see. Comes down here. Ooh, how mysterious. Disappeared off the keep my eye on the cathode wire. Ooh. Oh, isn't that interesting? It's going through these coils. So because this is an oscillator, you need some way to feed back some of the signal after being amplified back into the oscillator circuitry to get the oscillation going. So this is how it's done. The cathode current is fed through these coils and that causes you know some magnetic action and stuff like that. And then some of the signals peeled off and fired back up to the grid of the same tube. So feedback basically. Positive feedback and that sets up the oscillation. So it's not hard to ground. Let's look at this one over here. Oh, I gotta eat my hat here. Look at this. Which tube is that one now? It is. Uh, got a cathode resistor. 330 ohms. That's a typical size, you know, something around 500 or less. Small bypass capacitor. Still very important though. Um, so let's follow the grid back again. And the grid is given a ABC voltage variation too. Okay, that's great. Good, I've noticed that. So we want to make sure we find and check these these two uh, because it's carrying the tube current. Uh, this resistor can work pretty hard and uh, end up in trouble. Most resistors drift high. In many cases, you know, if you've got a 2.2 mega ohm resistor here and it drifts up to 2.8, I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. But if this one drifts from 330 to 500, that's kind of bad news. Bad news for it. So that's a trip through the schematic. And uh, we'll get back to working on the radio here.